All right, so if we, if we want to be able to sketch parametric curves, then of course we need to be able to talk about concavity, right? Think about curve sketching back in chapter three, right? We need to use the first derivative to get in intervals of increase, decrease. Second derivative tells us about concavity, right? Where is it kind of curving up? Where is it curving down, right? So how do we calculate concavity? Well, we know that concavity comes from the second derivative, right? So we need to be able to compute concavity in the following context. Y is some function of x, let's call it h of x, where x is, say, f of t, and y is, let's say, g of t, right? Okay. So we're looking basically for h double prime here. So let's think about that. So dy dx, or if you like, h prime of x, we know what that is. That's dy dt over dx dt. So it's g prime of t over f prime of t, right? So if you like, it's dy dt over dx dt, okay? Okay, so we can do that. So what is, what is d squared y? Um, so d squared y dx squared, well, that's going to be h double prime. Now, that is the derivative of h prime of x, sorry, x, with respect to x, and we can use the same kind of logic that we used for the first derivative to say, well, that's the same thing as doing the derivative with respect to t of h prime, which is g prime of t over f prime of t, and then dividing by dx dt, which is, well, f prime of t. Okay? Ah. But actually, this is what? That's just quotient rule, right? So derivative of the top, g double prime, times the bottom, f prime, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom. And then we divide by the bottom squared, but then we also have to divide by that same bottom again. So we get, we get something like this, f prime of t cubed. Okay, so that's certainly not as nice as calculating the, the second derivative, you know, if, if we just have y as a function of x. Well, depends. Actually, sometimes the second derivative is that unpleasant, right? We'll see how this works in an example. Um, now, in an example, typically what you might do is you don't worry so much about the labeling and the f's and the g's and the h's because that gets, gets kind of complicated. Nobody tries to memorize something like that. Um, well, maybe you do. It's more or less quotient rule with an extra thing, but more likely what you do is you calculate dy dx and you get it as a function of t. Um, and then you kind of do it all over again. You take the derivative of that and you, you divide by x prime. That's more or less how people tend to do this in practice. So here's an example. We did the first derivatives already, right? We saw that dy dx, so we said that's y prime of t, x prime of t, we computed these, so we have 2t plus 6 over 10t minus 6, or t plus 3 over 5t minus 3, right? And so then we already saw a couple things about that, right? We saw that we had a, a horizontal tangent at t equals minus 3, vertical tangent when t is 3 over 5, that's what we worked out last time. Um, now let's think about, well, what is, what is the second derivative? So the second derivative, d squared y dx squared, is going to be, well, it's the derivative of the first derivative, but that looks like this. It looks like d dt of dy dx divided by dx dt, right? So we can do it like that rather than trying to remember the general formula. And so what we get, 
So we do still have to do quotient rule, right? We, do, we have to do quotient rule. Okay, derivative of the top is just one times the bottom. So we get five t minus three minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. We get a five t plus three divided by the bottom squared. And then we also have to divide by dx dt again. And be careful, um, dx dt is not 5t minus 3, it's 10t minus 6. Okay? So let's clean that up and see what we get. Um, we get 5t minus 5t. Oh, interesting, that actually cancels. And then minus 3 minus 15, we actually get minus 18 over, if we factor out a 2, uh, we have 5t minus 3 cubed, okay? Now, um, that actually tells us something. You might, you might see the 18 on top and you think, oh no, like they're, you know, the derivative is never zero, second derivative is never zero, we're supposed to find intervals of concave up, concave down. Um, but be careful, the numerator is never zero, so yes, I guess, um, in the, in the usual sense, you would say that there's no inflection point. Um, but there is going to be a concavity change. It's just the concavity change happens at a vertical tangent, happens when the denominator is zero, right? So we can, we can actually make sense of that. So now we can actually say that um, it's going to be, let's see, if, x, if, if t is less than 3 over 5, right? then this will be negative, and that will be negative. So it should be concave up. So if t is less than 3 over 5, numerator and denominator are both negative. So it's concave up from minus infinity to 3 over 5, and it's concave down from 3 over 5 to infinity. Interesting. Actually, at this point, we're actually fairly well on our way um, to being able to sketch this curve. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll pause. I'm going to come back. Um, the question didn't ask for the sketch, but let's, let's give the sketch. I mean, at this point, we, we know about critical points. We know about concavity. We should be able to do a sketch. So let's pause, we'll come back, um, I'll clear some space, we'll see what that looks like.